Hey everyone and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down a huge weather pattern change that'll bring an extensive heat wave to the United States in addition to multiple storms that'll be bringing the risk of severe weather to a part of the country including the risk for damaging winds, large hail and even perhaps a few tornadoes. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. And we'll first begin with the Midwest, and that's where we're currently watching a low pressure system that is actually going to bring the risk for severe weather throughout this afternoon and as well as into the evening hours. As of right now, there is some convection beginning to fire off across parts of the Ohio Valley and the Mid Atlantic region, and that's where we do have a risk for at least some severe weather today with primarily damaging winds, but maybe an isolated tornado along with that. But notice again that low pressure system spin. It's just off to the west of the Chicago suburbs, and there is actually a little bit of some storm activity that's right now ongoing closer to. Indiana and Michigan. Obviously, when you watch this forecast, it might be a little bit different by then, but that storm activity is moving to the east, and we are still watching for at least a low-end threat for an isolated tornado out of that activity. Notice back over to the west of this, though, there's really not a whole lot going on. The dry air is all filtering in from the back end of this low-pressure system, and we actually have a cold front that is extending all the way back down through the southern plains, even into Texas. We are seeing some cooler weather in areas like Childress, Texas, for example. That's back over here. Temperature right now, as of this forecast is about 77 degrees so it's pretty cold over there for this time of the year but this is only going to last a few days because that massive heat wave will start to fill in to the rest of the United States as we go into later this week and unfortunately it's going to be here for a little while and I'll show you those areas that are going to be impacted by this in just a moment and then back down the southeast United States we do have some thunderstorm activity near Florida again pretty ordinary for the time of the summer that we're in in August but obviously this is something to watch out for again if you hear thunder make sure you go indoors and don't be outdoors during a thunderstorm all right, let's talk more about the current jet stream in the United States and talk about the weather pattern that is coming here across the country because we have a lot of interesting features as of right now. One of which is that low pressure system that's back over in the Midwest. And again, this is a positively tilted trough. We mentioned this in yesterday's weather forecast, and this really just has to do with how much moisture is being pulled out of this. In addition to this, if it's a negatively tilted trough, which would be facing more this way, we'd have a better chance for a tornado where it's getting really a more significant severe weather outbreak. Luckily, we're not in that mode of severe weather by any means this week. But we do have that feature right now that's positively tilted. And the jet stream itself is actually quite strong. Notice the southwesterly winds, overly strong winds there in the upper levels. That does promote the risk for at least some increased risk of severe weather. And then once we go through Tuesday into Wednesday, notice the heat dome. I haven't mentioned this yet, but our heat dome is actually be here on the western side of the United States for at least the next couple of days in terms of the upper levels. So the massive heat dome is going to be back out to the west, but it's not going to be there for very long. Notice how the jet stream becomes much weaker. This is where the strongest jet stream portion will be that's all the way back up in Canada and then a somewhat strong jet stream back over in parts of the northeast but notice by Thursday this really starts to not really do much we're gonna have a dip in the jet stream for those in the midwest but this heat dome will start to move further to the east so it's going to return to the great plains bring that relentless heat and then notice that trough that's going to be back over in the midwest this will bring another risk for severe weather on both Wednesday Thursday and even maybe Friday for those in the midwest and as well as even into the northeast this could perhaps actually become a negatively tilted trough which could be a bit concerning so we have to watch that closely once we go into friday as well as into saturday look where the heat dome is by the weekend it is unfortunately going to be across areas in the central plains and in the midwest this will be a big heat blast so if you're anywhere in these areas make sure you're taking the heat seriously heat is the number one killer in terms of weather in the united states so you want to make sure you're monitoring this weather very closely and limiting your outdoor time and the excessive heat that we're going to be seeing especially for this weekend but again this will probably be one of the worst heat waves that we'll see for the remainder of this summer it's going to be pretty brutal. We've had a lot of bad heat waves already. This will definitely be one of them. It'll be one of the top three, probably, just due to the fact to look at the scale of this thing. We are watching for a heat dome to really dominate across a large chunk of the United States. And again, if you saw my thumbnail in today's video, that's pretty much giving you the representation of what we're seeing. That's the heat dome that's going to be dominating, especially across parts of of even the Midwest and as well as the Central Plain. So make sure you're staying safe out there. Now, what does this heat actually look like? We're going to look at the temperature anomalies, which shows us the above average and the below average temperatures in the United States. And this is as of today. Notice that below average temperature air mass that extends all the way from Texas back through the Midwest. That is our colder air that's kind of ushering in from this low pressure system in the cold front. That's extending down here to the south. That's creating some northerly winds, bringing some colder air out of Canada. But once we go into Wednesday and Thursday, notice that cold air mass shrinks pretty quickly. We have a new low pressure system developing back up in Canada. That's going to be pretty intense, bringing some cold air behind it. But notice that warm air is also going to be out in front of it with those strong southerly winds that'll pull more, more 
moist air and as well as warmer air out of parts of the southern United States. And then once we go into Friday and a Saturday, colder air mass does enter the Midwest, but unfortunately by Saturday and Sunday, we are talking about an intense heat wave in the United States, especially across the Midwest, Central Plains, and Southern Plains, and even the Southeast United States. And this is likely not going to be going really anywhere anytime soon. Now, the Climate Prediction Center has also issued their own forecast for this. As of right now, this is the 6 to 10 day outlook from the 19th to the 23rd of this month. Notice where that main area of heat will be. This is the higher probability of seeing above average temperatures. This does not mean you'll see above average temperatures every day, but over this time frame, you have a very high likelihood of seeing above average high temperatures and even above average low temperatures. Meanwhile, the only area that might be a bit below average, which they desperately need it, need it by the way, is back over in areas like Arizona and California. So there's a little bit of relief there. And then once we go from the 21st to the 27th of this month, basically the second to last week of August, Nothing really changing, unfortunately. It's going to be well above average. And then in terms of the precipitation, it's going to be well below average for precipitation across a large chunk of the eastern tier of the United States. So south of the Midwest, through areas like the Dixie Alley and back into the Mississippi Valley, southern Ohio Valley, this is where there's a high likelihood of below average precipitation, which those areas have seen some extreme flooding this summer. Looks like you're going to go into a little bit of a dry spell for the next several days. Same thing goes from the 21st to the 27th as well. Similar story, above average precipitation for those on the western tier. Eastern tier likely to stay below average for precipitation for the remainder of this month, which obviously does mean severe weather will at least be at somewhat of a lower scale of things overall. Here's the future radar for the next seven days. So going through Wednesday, notice again, dry air will start to usher in to a pretty large chunk of the country. This is our next storm system, though, that we have to watch for very closely because this will bring an increased risk of severe weather for those in the Midwest going into Wednesday and as well as into Thursday. We will likely see a line of storms come out of this that could pose a threat for some significant damaging winds and perhaps even a tornado risk. There's a chance I go live for this, so make sure you hit the bell icon down below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It's that red button down below. It's free to do. And then going into Thursday, notice that the storm system will move into Michigan and Indiana with some storm activity there. Low pressure system, by the way, look at the millibar level, 989. That is a pretty deep low pressure system. That's something that we don't see very often during this time of the year. And then once we go into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, again, notice the high pressure system dominating across the eastern tier of the United States at the lower levels. That will start to increase the heat Heat. And obviously, this is a pretty strong high pressure system, 1,020 millibars. It's definitely pretty strong. By the end of the weekend into early next week, not a whole lot of storm systems at all. There might be another storm system or two back up in the northern plains of the Midwest, which is typical for this time of the year, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty small scale. So maybe one or two storm systems throughout the weekend and throughout at least the early part of early next week. All right, here's the severe weather potential for tomorrow. Not a whole lot here tomorrow. It's going to be a pretty low end chance for any severe weather, but damaging winds being the main concern here across the East Coast back through the Southeast. East. Maybe a brief tornado or two in that yellow shaded region. That is your slight risk of severe weather. Same thing goes for the southern New England area. There is going to be that low end chance for maybe an isolated tornado. I'm not very concerned about this, but I would at least make sure you have a tornado action plan in place just in case you do end up being under a tornado warning tomorrow. And then heading into wacky weather Wednesday, that is when we're going to begin to see that next storm to arrive to parts of the northern plains in the upper Midwest. And this will eventually produce that damaging wind threat down the road. Yeah, we'll have more details on this in our next forecast. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.